Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Bauer, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about canine ACL disease. Uh, the ACL is uh, the abbreviation for the anterior cruciate ligament. It is the most common injury that we see in veterinary orthopedics. It's a very common injury in humans as well. The, 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 the pathology of how that happens is, is actually completely different, though, between humans and dogs, and we'll talk about that as we move forward. As far as terminology goes, in dogs, that ligament is really called the cranial cruciate ligament, but everyone knows it as the ACL, which is human terminology, so we will refer to it as the ACL within our website and throughout this uh, little presentation. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is talk to you a little bit about uh, joint anatomy, and I have a number of ways to illustrate that. This is uh, a plastic model showing the anatomy uh, with the femur above, tibia below, uh, the kneecap or patella sits at the front of the femur, and the top of the tibia is the tibial plateau. Inside the joint we'll see the ACL and the medial and lateral meniscus, which you can't see really well on this model. So I'll move to a model that I've removed some of the structures so we can see that more easily. So same orientation on the bone. And then within the joint, we see in the center, with my finger pushing on it, we see in the center the ACL. In real life, the ACL's much bigger than that, but on the model, it, it shows up as a relatively underrepresentative size. Uh, and then at the top of the tibial plateau, are two shock absorbers, and each one is called a meniscus. Uh, and so that's the pertinent anatomy of the canine stifle joint on the uh, plastic model. I also have an artist illustration that I'd like to demonstrate as well. So here we have a, a artist illustration, which again, the femur is above the joint, tibia below the joint, kneecap at the top of the joint, the top of the tibia is the tibial plateau uh, shown with the blue line, and in dogs it's downward, backward, sloping, and then the ACL is, is labeled uh, on that illustration. So let me show you a radiographic illustration as well with, again, the femur above the joint, tibia below the joint, uh, kneecap or patella at the front of the joint, and the sloping tibial plateau. We actually cannot see the ACL on an x-ray, uh, but we'll talk about that more when we get to the part of diagnosis. So that's a brief overview of canine joint anatomy. And uh, with that in mind, I'd like to, to, to wrestle around a little bit of the question on everyone's mind, which is why so many dogs are tearing their ACLs. I know you as a pet owner want to know that. Mike Bauer is a pet owner. I'd like to know that. Uh, and certainly as a veterinary surgeon, I'd like to know that, but the answer is fairly elusive. And we've tried to look at, at, at all the variables at breed, age, gender, weight, conformation, but we've not come up with a specific answer on, on, on why dogs are tearing their ACLs. And, and again, it's the most com common problem we see. Uh, we do think that there is one common denominator, and it's biomechanical stress. Uh, and the biomechanical stress is related to the anatomy. Uh, and so I'm going to illustrate that a number of different ways. So on this side of my scrubs, I have embroidered a, a human knee. And again, the bone above is the femur. The bone below is the tibia. The ACL connects the two, uh, and the top of the tibia is illustrated with the red line, uh, which is relatively level. On the human side, uh, because of the tibial plateau, the femur rests on a relatively level surface. The way that the ACL is stressed is if the tibia thrusts forward, such as if a football player hits from behind. On the other side of my pants, I have embroidered a canine knee. Again, femur above, tibia below, ACL connecting the two. The difference is that the tibial plateau in the dog slopes down and back. Uh, weight bearing causes a downward-backward sliding, which causes 
chronic stressing of the ACL. And that same type of movement, I also will illustrate for you with a set of x-rays. So if we look at uh, this next x-ray, it is uh, in the same orientation as the previous. And what we see happen during weight bearing is dogs slide down and back on their sloping tibial plateau. And that downward backward sliding motion is what's responsible for this chronic biomechanical wear and tear on the joint. And so we actually think why dogs tear their ACLs is because they're under chronic biomechanical stress and they actually don't just tear in two and that happens often in humans. We go skiing and go over the top of our skis and we tear our ACL into two pieces. In dogs, usually it is a gradual little by little type of wear and tear. And I have uh, four little clips of arthroscopic images uh, that illustrate that. These are, these are four different patients, but in my opinion, it illustrates well what happens uh, with this gradual biomechanical wear and tear. The first video is a normal ACL, and we see nice tight bundles of fibers. But over time, with biomechanical stress, the ligament becomes discolored, the fibers become loose, the ligament becomes soft, uh, as we see probing it here in this illustration, in this video. That gradually leads to actual fibers that tear, uh, as we see in this patient that has a clear-cut partial ACL tear. And that tearing gradually worsens until we see a full ACL tear, and it almost looks like a mop head that's been pulled and yanked apart. So it's in a lot of fibers, large fibers, small fibers, but, but that's the end result of this biomechanical uh, wear and tear. So I'd like to summarize that again using the x-ray illustration uh, with the femur sliding down and back and down and back. And that motion and that biomechanical problem that we see uh, it dictates a lot of things. It, it, it tells us, maybe in an oversimplified way, but it tells us why so many dogs are tearing their ACL. Um, it dictates the fact that once dogs start to tear their ACLs, they're virtually always progressive. It dictates that dogs with ACL tears that aren't repaired never do well because as they bear weight, their knee does that chronic shifting motion and it dictates how we fix canine ACL tears and we'll talk about that in the upcoming section.